Senator Joe Manchin is now citing inflation for why he wants to place a pause on Biden's Build Back Better agenda. Uh, obviously, this is just an excuse. We have covered inflation in great detail on this show, especially because of the fact that it covers uh, very specific sectors of the economy and is caused by uh, supply chain issues related to the coronavirus pandemic and workers uh, you know, refusing to take jobs for low pay, all of that. Now, Manchin doesn't wanna pass the Build Back Better agenda because it hurts his bottom line, it hurts the bottom line of his corporate donors. But nonetheless, he said uh, the following. And, and he's getting a lot of help from corporate media. Let me be clear about that as well. And I want you to pay particular attention to the stenography taking place over at Axios with um, one of their worst reporters, Hans Nichols, uh, who loves to do all sorts of positive PR for corporate Democrats. He writes, Red hot inflation data validates the instinct of Senator Joe Manchin to punt President Biden's Build Back Better agenda until next year, potentially killing a quick deal on the $1.75 trillion package. People familiar with the matter tell Axios. Oh, really? People with, uh, familiar with the matter tell Axios. Fascinating, fascinating. Who are those people who uh, are yeah. familiar with the matter? Yeah, so yeah. there's two things there. And then, uh, it, what, just to be slightly more accurate, what should have been right underneath that is, this message paid for by all of our corporate advertisers who do not want that bill because it raises corporate taxes. Mm -hmm. So by the way, it doesn't even raise corporate taxes, it just gives you a minimum tax of 15%. But God forbid those corporate advertisers should have to pay a nickel in taxes. Taxes is for you, not for the corporate advertisers of Axios. Keep it absolutely real, okay? And the second reason why he's kissing Manchin's ass by going, red hot inflation proves Manchin's so right. I'm an objective reporter, by the way, doing marketing for Joe Manchin. Just stenography. Who, right. Uh, the reason is because he's got a hot tip from Manchin's office. The insiders say it. Ooh, I'm a journalist. I got a hot tip. Uh, Manchin's press secretary gave me a press release. And I wrote it like it was a breaking news event because that's what helps my career. And everybody else goes, hey, good job in the executive suite. They're like, oh, the advertisers love that one. Nice breaking news. Get out of here. Do so, your job, do your actual job. I mean, he is doing his job. This is his job. This that's is what the problem. he's paid to yes, do. Yeah. Um, look, we're gonna get into details about this story. But let me just get this out of the way because I have to, okay? Um, I'm not interested in this pathetic little dance that Manchin and Biden and corporate Democrats are gonna engage in over who knows how many months, okay? We're not gonna get the Build Back Better agenda. Uh, Democrats who claim that they were in favor of the Build Back Better agenda have essentially given away any and all leverage they had by already voting for and passing the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which corporate America loves. They salivate over it, it's like Pavlov's dog. Uh, you know, The second they think about the government handouts, the corporate corporations are gonna get as a result of that bipartisan infrastructure bill. Like they're literally, their mouths start salivating. They love it, they love it, okay? And Democrats failed in passing that before they got a concrete uh, strategy in place to get the Build Back Better agenda passed. And so it is what it is, it's not gonna pass. The only way I see it passing is if it's stripped down so much that the only thing left is um, increasing the, the salt cap so people can um, save more on their taxes in some of these blue states or these high tax states. And if all of the um, real social spending is taken out, that's the only way it passes. So in other words, you're not, obviously you're not gonna get paid family leave. You're probably not gonna get any help with childcare. It's all garbage, you're not gonna get anything. I, I just, because I don't wanna play this game for another yeah. three months. No, I wanna I'm play not, it. I'm not Let's play it, it Anna. It's, it's, it's the, like I, I, it, for Manchin, it's not about inflation. This Axios article doesn't go into his conflicts of interest at all. The fact that he's making half a million dollars a year off a coal company that he founded and is still heavily invested in. No, Did Axios mention that? Not at all. So like, like we can keep playing this game, I, I'm not interested in it. They're not gonna pass the Build Back Better agenda. I think some progressives like Ro Khanna failed in just trusting Biden. Yeah, we'll see how Biden's gonna deliver for you in just a minute. Uh, but Cenk, why don't you take it away? Because you were right, I was right, and Democrats are failures. All right, <laughs> okay, it's a fair summary. All right, so look, um, Anna's telling the conclusion of the game. Uh, Manchin here by saying that he's gonna uh, delay it completely until next year is basically rubbing it in the face of progressives, you dupes. Of course we weren't gonna pass it. The House version, 
that Pelosi tr uh, uh, promised you and you trusted Biden. <laughs> you think I would pass the House version? But to be fair to Manchin, he already said he wasn't gonna pass the House version. He said, I might and I might not. We told you on the show earlier. And then Jayapal said, well, I trust him. But wait a minute, it's, he didn't say he was gonna do it. Well, Biden says he's gonna do it and I trust Biden. Okay, well, this is accountability time. So it appears that Jayapal was wrong. Uh, now Manchin is basically mocking people, mocking progressives saying, you're suckers. Of course, we're not gonna do the build back better bill. Right? Let's go to graphic three here. With yeah. a limited number of legislative days left in the year, writes Axios, Manchin is content to focus on the issues that need to be addressed, Axios is told. They include funding the government, raising the debt ceiling, and passing the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, so more military <laughs> funding. Those are his priorities. So congratulations, Jayapal. Uh, you are an awful leader of the Progressive Caucus. And the Progressive Caucus, unfortunately, includes several progressives uh, who aren't actual fighters for the working class in this country. They claim to be, they claim to be, but they fold immediately. And now you have corporate media, including CNN, uh, repeating incessantly that, oh, look at Biden. Biden's finally taking inflation seriously. He wasn't taking it so seriously last month, but he's taking it seriously now. And it really calls into question whether he's gonna pass his, his agenda. He's not, he's not. No. Democrats are failures. Okay, yeah. and this is why we're seeing elections play out the way they are. The right wing offers something to their base. It's something awful. It's fear mongering, right? It's nonstop fear mongering about the others and fear mongering about critical race theory and all this culture war garbage. But they give their voters something. What do the Democrats have? All Democrats do is get baited into the culture wars because they haven't provided anything to their voters. Okay, like I was saying, it's a failure. Kind of it's accountability time. That's all right. Look, you know, when you fail, there should be accountability. Otherwise, the whole caucus is saying, oh, that was a great job of failing. Let's do it again. So, is it really failure by Jayapal and the so called negotiators among progressives? Well, guys, Manchin just said it's going to next year. I'm not even considering it. They're they say, be well, fundraising. no, hold on, hold on. They say, well, look, maybe I'm going to do a couple of months is next year. It's not, is that a big deal? No, then he adds on to just to rub it in further. Oh no, no, I'm gonna put it behind three other bills. In other words, we're not gonna get to it. I was actually too generous. Anna's skepticism in the in the earlier predictions uh, so far appears to be more correct. Absolutely. I, I, I thought uh, that there was a bigger chance that they were gonna take BBB and they're gonna strip it down and take out anything that corporations don't approve of. It wasn't gonna be paid for by any corporate tax increases or anything along those lines, but they were gonna keep things like universal pre-K that corporations actually do want. Right, so whatever was corporate approved, they were gonna pass as as a trash bill, and then do marketing. Oh my God, another celebration, historic, etc. And I thought it was a lower chance that they would just go, no, we just dismiss you. Of course, we weren't gonna pass anything, you fools. That's, I mean, that that says I'm not even gonna do marketing for you. I'm not even gonna let you pretend that you had a win. I'm I'm gonna slap you right across the face. And as Do they Kurt, like it? Yeah, as Kurt Russell once famously asked Billy Bob Thornton, are you gonna sit there and bleed all day? Or are you gonna do something about it? No, and the answer for progressives is no. But look, now accountability on the other side, okay? Uh, there were six Justice Democrats who voted no on, on this uh, Biff bill, on the bill that Manchin wanted. Why? They said, we don't wanna give away our leverage. If we give away our leverage, we're not gonna get Build Back Better. Well, they were 100% right. So has the mainstream media come out and said, Oh, our bad. No, it turns out AOC, Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush, Ayanna Presley, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, they're actually the smartest politicians in all of Washington. They knew that they would be giving away leverage and then Manchin would kill Build Back Better. That's exactly what happened. No, they're gonna keep writing the articles as if they voted against infrastructure because they wanted less for their voters. When it's the exact opposite, they wanted more for their voters. But yet, the, the, the corporate media, the mask is off. Like they're, they, Right now, when this whole propaganda about inflation, like the minute they got the corporate back bill passed, mm -hmm. and they don't want any other spending that goes to the voters passed, oh, inflation, oh my God, the debt, the deficit, oh my God, inflation, debt. They passed $2 trillion worth of tax cuts for the rich under Trump. Nobody talked about inflation, nobody talked about, uh, uh, okay, you say, okay, forget inflation because hey, the numbers are slightly different. How about the debt, the deficit? No one, zero. 
Zero, none of the anchors talked about it. None of the Axios writers talked about it. Now it was, oh, a voter might get something. No, the progressives are wrong. How could they not back the corporate backed bill? Corporations are awesome. They want something for their voters. They're evil, right? Get out of here, man. So the whole game is nonsense. Honestly, almost everybody in Washington except those six are corrupt. If you're in the progressive caucus and you didn't vote no, are you really progressive? So yeah, that's a little dispiriting that the progressive caucus, caucus is a joke. But oh, they could begin to repair the damage by getting new leadership. Of course, Jayapal shouldn't be the leader anymore. That fail was so thorough and so quick, it, it's mind boggling. I mean, that's Manchin, like I said, it was an open handed slap. And, and likely, other than the six core justice Democrats, the rest of the progressives will now meekly do marketing for their corporate Democratic opponents, if they really are opponents. Oh, it's so, it's right. so like- And now they will say, oh, no, no, Cenk and Ann are being unfair. We didn't sure. really need Build Back Better. We, the corporate Democrats are right. The infrastructure bill is good enough. It's good enough. I mean, almost every dollar goes to corporate America, but it builds bridges and roads and it's good enough. That's the saddest part. That's the saddest part. When then they get turn around and make the progressive so-called leaders do marketing for the for the bills, pared down bills that they passed, full well knowing they lost on all of their progressive priorities. Where is it? Where show me paid family leave, show me lower drug prices. You did not deliver. That's a fact, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you. I mean, we can't even get the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. Zero okay. wins. And by Zero. The way, I mean, Bernie was campaigning on that in 2016. Hey, wakey, wakey, it's 2021. You and lost. the numbers you should lost. actually be higher at this point. You lost. They lost. No, they you did lost. lose. So anyway, look, let's just get to your videos, okay? Cuz like I I'm I'm done with this story. I'm done with the Democrats. I'm just done. Absolutely done. They don't deliver. All they do is this ridiculous posturing about how like, oh, we're so much better than Republicans because look at us, we actually care about the disenfranchised. And they never deliver, they never do it. So okay. go ahead. So I just look guys, the reason we're gonna show you the videos is because uh, right, the Jayapals of the world will now pretend to be surprised. Like oh, Joe Manchin says he's not gonna vote for the bill until we pass like 28 other bills. I'm so surprised. So I want to show us telling you that that was going to happen before it happened. This is before they voted. Watch. Manchin, on the other hand, says, I do not promise it. He was very clear in his press conference. He said, it is equally likely that I will vote no. So later when Jayapal, as you're going to see now, she's like, oh, I trust and love these people. My God, they would never, a politician lying, a corporate politician lying, it would never happen, my beloved Democratic colleagues, right? Um, well, later Manchin will say, I didn't lie. I told you before you surrendered that I wasn't going to necessarily vote for your bill. So don't pretend it's a surprise to you now. That was November 2nd, that was nine days ago, that was before your vote. And then we even told you that Manchin was going to make an excuse like fill in the blank. In this case, it happened to be inflation. Watch us tell you what's gonna happen before it happened because it's really easy to predict. I'm telling you right now, the minute they pass the infrastructure bill, that's a corporate backed bill, they lose all leverage instantly. They have literally zero leverage. I wish it weren't the case, but that's the case. And so what is Manchin gonna do? What any sensible negotiator would do. I changed my mind. In fact, I didn't even change my mind. I told you ahead of time that I was equally likely to vote no. That's and you right. were an idiot and surrendered to me anyway. And and I and I explained in that video, hey, he'll come up with an excuse of XYZ. It doesn't matter what the excuse is. And so then in this case, the convenient excuse was inflation. No, and it's it's actually a little sicker, right? Because while Manchin is citing inflation, as we've commented on several times, inflation is limited to very specific sectors of the economy that are impacted by either supply chain issues or in the case of gas, right? There is an increase of prices per gallon for gasoline at the pump. We're talking about our oil dependency, right? We're still oil dependent. And the Build Back Better agenda is supposed to focus on getting us pivoting the country to renewable energy. And by the way, why are we experiencing higher gas prices right now? Is it because Joe Biden is like creepily sitting in the White House like, hmm, how can I make gas prices higher? No, because gas prices are manipulated by OPEC. Oil producing countries that are part of OPEC, this cartel, they make decisions about the production of oil. 
And they, on purpose, um, hold back the production of oil in order to see a spike in prices. And that's what they're doing right now because they wanna make the money that they lost from the beginning of the pandemic when the demand for gasoline at the pump was at an all time low because people were staying home. So we're, we're like basically vulnerable to this manipulation, this endless manipulation because we're still dependent on fossil fuels. And Manchin, who's now claiming that inflation is the problem here, right? He's worried about inflation. That's why he can't pass the Build Back Better agenda, is who's keeping us dependent on fossil fuels yes. when this bill is exactly what was supposed to get us off of that dependency. Oh, That's a great irony. And honestly, I hadn't even thought about that last piece Genius. of the irony. What can I say? <laughs> okay, so last things guys say here, don't give up all hope. Remember, we were worried that nobody was gonna vote no. But the six just Democrats held strong. And by the way, they got massive nuclear blowback. The corporate media yelled at them at the top of their lungs. Every article smeared them, every single article. And they got tons of constituent calls because the New York Times and everybody else is a bunch of liars. Well, they're like, oh yeah, progressives wanted less for their voters. Hey, the voters, they screwed you over. I mean, it's just, it's trash, pure trash, right? Yep. So they withstood that nuclear blast to do the right thing, the principal thing. So it turns out you can elect uncorrupted, clean progressives who actually fight for you. Okay, now the last thing is Joe Biden. Look, Joe Biden's a joke. Uh, yep. He. He never meant any of those progressive provisions. We told you he didn't mean it. We told you that it was all a joke and that him and Manchin were gonna have a good laugh over it later. And and the corporate press said, no, Joe and Jaya Paul and Pelosi, oh, Joe Biden is very tough and he knows how to negotiate and he's got a, Ro Khanna told us on this show that Biden has a secret deal with Manchin. Really, where's the secret deal? Or they do have a secret deal and the secret deal was to screw over progressives and have a belly laugh over it. There's only one promise that Biden is going to keep. And it's to his donors, nothing will fundamentally change. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.